Well, hello there, my friend Jonathan Doyle with you once again. Welcome back to the Catholic Teacher Daily Podcast. Well done to you. If you're a regular listener, if you're tuning in each day, well done to you. I imagine you're driving to work or maybe in the gym or going for a walk or something with the dog. Hopefully I'm bringing you something useful every single day. We are on this journey together. We are looking at Michael, Archbishop Michael Miller's five essential marks of Catholic schools. And today we are heading into section four, where we're going to talk about a Catholic school being imbued with a Catholic worldview throughout its curriculum. And he's going to split this into a few sections, and we want to touch on a few of these. I guess this is just another one of these great central things about Catholic education that we all really need to understand. This is kind of a non-negotiable. We're going to talk a little bit about integral formation. If you're a serious Catholic educator, you must be familiar with this term, integral formation. Talk about that. But I guess if I could set this little episode up for you, it's this idea that we want to get out of the mindset that the Catholicness of our schools is something handled by the RE teacher. So what this looks like uh, in a a worst case example is a school that has some Catholic stuff on its website. It has a mass maybe once a year or um, twice a year. And it has occasional little bits of Catholic stuff sprinkled around the place like like little flakes on a muffin. I just mentioned that because my daughter made muffins yesterday. Really good muffins, by the way. Thank you, Stephanie. And we then kind of expect that the religious education teachers are just going to take care of the Catholic stuff. And the rest of us can just get on with whatever it is that we are teaching or doing. That's the worst case example. So what we're going to talk about today is this, uh, in this idea of the school being imbued with a Catholic worldview right throughout its curriculum. So this is a really central idea. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to this. What we are going to be discussing here is this idea of the Catholic worldview permeating the entire educational project of a Catholic school. So the first thing we really have to understand is this idea of, I guess, integral formation. Integral formation. By integral, we mean that no area of the person is ignored or overlooked in the Catholic educational project. So let me read you a quote here from the seminal document from the, from the Vatican. This is the Catholic school, a document called the Catholic school. It's paragraph 31. So pay attention to this. I don't want it to be abstract for you. It is really essential to what we're doing. So here it is. The integral formation of the human person, which is the purpose of education. Hear that word? Which is the purpose of education. Includes the development of all the human faculties of the students, together with preparation for professional life, Formation of ethical and social awareness, becoming aware of the transcendental and religious education. Every school and every educator in the school ought to be striving to form strong and responsible individuals who are capable of making free and correct choices, thus preparing young people to open themselves more and more to reality and to form in themselves a clear idea of the meaning of of life. So if that sounds abstract, I'll just give you a little one here from um, Bishop Miller, who says, to be integral or complete, so integral formation means complete formation, Catholic schooling must be constantly inspired and guided by the gospel. As we have seen, the Catholic school would betray its purpose if it failed to found itself on the person of Christ and his teaching. It derives all the energy necessary for its educational work from him. Okay, so this integral or complete formation means that what we are doing in our school affects all aspects of our students, psychological, emotional, physical, spiritual, aesthetic, all these different components. So each of our subject areas, regardless of what those subject areas are, economics, math, art, tech shop, it doesn't matter what those areas are, all of them are opportunities for young people to encounter a sense of the divine. And of course, it's not in every lesson, right? We're not going to be teaching woodwork every day going, you know, blah, 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 this reveals, you know, whatever. It's more like you could do it any number of ways. You could just casually have a reflection one day saying Jesus was a carpenter or read a reflection on Noah building the ark and just do it light in a lighthearted sense so that the gospel, the scriptures, the spiritual life just 
gently permeates all these different subject areas. There, I mean, they're extreme examples, right? We're not going to be able to come up with something all the time, but it's this broader view that this Catholic worldview, this gospel-centered Christological vision permeates all that we do throughout the school day. And it says here from Archbishop Miller, all instruction, therefore, must be authentically Catholic in content and methodology across the entire program of studies. So again, someone could hear that and say, so Jonathan, you're telling me that we must have Catholic content in every subject. I'm going, what we have to have is a Catholic worldview throughout each subject. To give an example, let's say you're going to do a school musical. There are a vast number of theoretical possible plays, musicals you could choose from. Some of them are deeply moving and beautiful. Some of them are really not very nice and ugly or dwell on topics or issues that are quite uncomfortable or unnecessary to talk about in a public setting. But a Catholic worldview would inform that decision. So it would be something like, what can we do that is beautiful, engaging, interesting, joyful, that people will love, that will increase community or that will speak to values that we hold to be true in this school. You know, it could be something like in the sporting context, what, what sort of culture do we, do we create for our sporting teams about how we treat the other team, how we deal with referees and umpires or how we relate to other parents or from other schools, like those kinds of questions about how do we conduct ourselves as a school community are not going to be answered by utilitarian secular ideologies. They're going to be answered by gospel-centered thinking. So this integral formation, I guess, has a component for the student. Like, are we presenting Christ and the gospels in whatever way is appropriate in the context that we are in, in a particular subject or a particular interaction? And are we helping to build a culture in our school that is deeply Christological and Catholic? So look, I don't want to labor this point, but I guess it's just a filter. Maybe that's the best way to understand it. It's a filter. Is, is the filter that we use around our pedagogy, our culture, our events, our way of being, is it Christological and Catholic? Does it lead to an integral, complete, full formation of what it means to be human? And by that, you know, we could tap into Christian anthropology again, which of course is like, you know, the, the nature of what it means to be human, the fact that we are created by God, we're loved, the dignity and value of every single person made in the image of God, those kinds of values and beliefs permeating culture in our schools, or it's a, the culture of secular modernity. So it's pretty straightforward as a filter, isn't it? Like, but what it requires is that each of us, however imperfectly, is seeking to grow in holiness. So that this, it's very difficult to get a manual that says how to have a Catholic school based on integral formation and just try and tick a box. It has to come from our lived experience, our hearts, our minds, our spirituality. So integral formation and Catholic culture in a school will only be a reflection of the Catholic culture and formation in the hearts of its leadership and its staff. So... What we need to do is respond to the gift of baptism. We need to respond to the work of the Holy Spirit and seek to become saints, seek to become men and women deeply given over to God who want the best for our young people. All right, I'm going to finish it up there. Well, God bless you, my friend. Uh, please come and check out the links here. You can book me to speak. My new website is up there, the YouTube channel. All the good stuff is there. And uh, yeah, share this with some people. Make sure you've subscribed. My name's Jonathan Doyle. This has been the Catholic Teacher Daily Message. And you and I are going to talk again tomorrow.